It was a Friday evening back in 2012. I was on my way to my friend Hannah's house. It was a bit chilly outside since it was still early spring, but not cold enough that you would need a winter jacket. The walk wasn't long either, just two minutes, especially if I took the shortcut through the neighbor's garden. I had walked that path a thousand of times. Hannah had been my best friend since the first day of elementary school. We were a little different in the sense that she always knew what she wanted and everything was planned out. She was going to study in the US, travel the world and become someone everybody knew. She was fearless, confident and bold. And me? At that time, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, and I mostly lived in the moment. That Friday, we were going to watch The Voice together. We had loved watching singing competitions ever since we were kids. But something was different this Friday. Hannah wasn't as quick with her comments, and her energy wasn't the same. She had mentioned over time that she's been struggling with migraines, but we didn't talk much about it, and her doctor had ensured that there were nothing wrong. A few days later, everything changed. I got a text saying Hannah was in the hospital. They had found a tumor in her brain. A few years later, I found myself at university in my final year of my master's. I was walking down this long hallway filled with laboratories on one side and doors leading to offices belonging to chemistry professors on the other side. I had decided to pitch an idea that I've been working on for months. I knocked on the door before walking in and full of excitement, I told the professor about my idea, how I was going to use seaweed to replace petroleum in furniture foam. The professor leaned back in his chair and said, if that were possible, the greatest scientists in the world would already have done it. <laughs> I think the disappointment showed on my face, but I didn't say anything. I left and remember thinking, maybe the greatest scientists have tried, but I still can't buy furnitures with seaweed foam at IKEA. I simply decided to ignore his opinion. I remember thinking, he might be an expert in his field, but he has never made foam from seaweed before. <laughs> that wasn't the last time I dealt with skepticism. In the first few years, almost everyone I met doubted that I could create something that didn't already exist. They also thought that I should leave material science to scientists in the lab. They made fun of me when they heard that I had studied business development and that I never would opened a chemistry book before. But I kept going back to my kitchen where all the material development was happening. It wasn't a fancy laboratory, no scientist. Just me, some pots, raw materials, and an oven. I will never forget the smell of seaweed boiling on the stove <laughs> and the feeling that I was a million miles away from a proof of concept. As I stood over the kitchen counter, surrounded by failed attempts and people saying my idea was stupid, I thought a lot about Hannah. She always said that she was going to get better. The doctors couldn't remove the tumor since it was in her brain, but she said it wouldn't stop her. I have always admired her positive way of thinking and her confidence. How she could stand tall in any situation, sure of herself and what she could achieve. Unfortunately, over time, Hannah got worse. The next Friday, we sat down to watch The Voice together. It was in a nursing home. Hannah had become paralyzed after brain surgery, 
and had to relearn how to walk again. I remember sitting in this big red armchair beside her hospital bed, watching TV. And as usual, we argued about the contestants. And for a few hours, everything felt completely normal. From Hannah, I have learned the art of not listening to others. It's not about ignoring reality, it's about focusing on what you believe is possible and allowing yourself to give it a try. The company I built in my kitchen, it's still in its early stages, but we have managed to create foam from seaweed, the first of its kind. <laughs> We're also producing it and selling it to our first customers. Not too long ago, the professor who doubted me sent me an email. He asked if I could give a presentation to his students. I said yes on the spot. Not because I needed to prove him wrong, but because he had showed me something important. The people we choose not to listen to they don't really care what we do with their opinions. It wasn't personal that day. I had asked him what he thought, and he just answered. And my decision not to listen wasn't about rejecting his opinion. It was about the belief in my own idea. 15 months after Hannah's diagnosis, I visited her at the hospital. She had lost the ability to open her eyes and to speak. So this time, she was only listening. I told her how much I admire her, and I also promised that I would appreciate and make the most out of my own life. Hannah passed away a few hours after my visit. She made the most out of her final year, overcoming her limitations. She learned to walk again. She applied to college in the US, all while creating these lasting memories and leaving a profound impact on my life and the life of others. After Hannah passed away, I learned that she had known all along that she wasn't going to get better. She never told me. She made the choice not to listen. No one was going to decide for her what she could or couldn't do. That confidence, the same confidence she had had all her life, always stayed with her. And since then, I have learned that seaweed deals with challenges in a way that is not so different from what I learned from Hannah. Seaweed doesn't just survive, it thrives in some of the harshest conditions beyond the water. In the strongest currents where other plants wouldn't stand a chance. It doesn't fight the currents, it bends, adapts and finds a way to hold on. Its resilience comes from being flexible and knowing how to move with the forces around it. In the end, it's not about pushing back against every obstacle. It's about knowing how to keep moving forward, trusting that there's always a way. So, when someone tells you something can't be done, ask them, how do you know? Maybe, they haven't tried hard enough. Maybe they haven't tried at all. And maybe the art of not listening is exactly what you need to make the impossible possible. Thank you. Yeah.